this one out. It's a very light colored Marilliana, I think. Oh, we know. Is it a hybrid? That growth point doesn't look like it's aggressive for, I think. This must be some sort of hybrid, or maybe it's just really young. It's really light. Cool. Anyway, we're almost there. And it's a nasty fall. Right down there. Check that out. Pretty cool. Nips here though. Okay, this one's in the shade, so that's why I think it's a little bigger. Check this out. It's another truncata. Look at that. It's pretty shady here. That is pretty, that's pretty big. That's what she said! <laughs> Check that out. See? Blueberries rely on certain species of fungi to survive. The fungi provide certain nutrients that the soil lacks, and the plants in return provide sugars. Research has even shown that fungi can act as a barrier, making plants tolerant like of heavy metal toxicity yeah. in ultramafic soils. Like an apple. We'll take another one. Yeah, like an apple. A really sour one. Pretty cool. Look at it. I wonder what that is. Here's a climbing one. Another climbing one. Weird. Cool. The sun is just beaming down on these guys. It is not, it's not cool at all. These are in direct sunlight. Whoa, this one's a bit squat. I think this one's a... Could be... Could be Mariliana, Mendanawensis, something like that. I mean, look at the leaves. See? See? That's definitely something like that. This is something new. See? Squat. Nepenthes bellii is very tolerant of shady conditions, but it does and can happily grow in full sun. It's a very small species that produces fat and tubby pitchers, as you can see here. This might be a bellii, I mean, the leaves are so tiny. all over my mouth. See? It's all tiny. Small leaves. This is the branch. There's another one. See? It's just small. It's probably in belly eye. Anyway, I'm gonna shove that back in there. I'm sorry I disturbed you. It was like that when I found it. Now how did carnivorous plants like pitcher plants evolve such mechanisms of catching food because that's what the pitchers are for they're for catching food like ants and bugs and all sorts of stuff they produce nectar in these thingies this lid this lid thing here and it attracts ants let's see see that that's an ant yeah ants ants and what happens is they they eventually end up there and they fall down the pitchers because it's very, very slippery. <laughs> and it's got digestive fluids there that will keep the ant in there and eventually digest it. So why would the ant slip down these things pitchers? Well, are they, are they dumb? Uh, probably, but these pitchers are designed to be so slippery 
especially when it's wet these things are on a microscopic level very difficult for the design of most insects uh, our, what do you call these limbs hands to get a grip I'm over explaining it it's, it's basically hard to get a grip for them insects and stuff this this dirt this all this dirt has absolutely no no nutrients whatsoever oh, it's low in nutrients it's low in nitrogen and phosphorus which is something that plants absorb from the soil so that they can grow all nice and lovely however in places like these you get an enough elevation in rainforest areas you get places like these where you get ultramafic soils or laterite soils or serpentine soils and those have been stripped of nutrients which is why all the trees here are kind of small see you don't see any towering trees up here because the soil doesn't have enough nutrients for these guys to get just freaking huge and carnivorous plants found a way through this by developing these catching mechanisms so they get all their nutrients from the ants the bugs and all the stuff that they catch Look at this stuff. That's the dirt here. This is chromite. This stuff is basically devoid of all the nutrients that most plants need to grow. So what happens is, if you were to put a regular plant here from the lowlands and you were to just chuck them in here on the dirt. Oh, I don't, oh what's that? I wonder who that is. If you were to chuck them out here in the dirt, it wouldn't do well. It would probably uh, build up toxic elements in its body, toxic metals. This, this stuff is high in metallic shit. And pla most plants don't like that. This is a, oh, it's a, it's a Marilliana, I think. It's a little weird though. Yeah, it's weird, look at that. It's wonky. Let's check out the other one, which hasn't opened yet. Yeah, hasn't opened yet. I don't know what this is. It looks like a Meruliana to me. Could be a hybrid. I don't know. Is it? Oh, it's just a regular Meruliana. Pretty big too. It's green. See? It's growing in this stuff. This stuff is basically uh, chromite I think it's high in nickel iron possibly aluminum or aluminium if you're from those places and it's pretty much toxic to most plants that that aren't designed what did I just pull that I have no idea I'm so sorry I just pulled this thingy nah, it's dead anyway anyway I am getting sidetracked these this stuff is toxic to most plants but these guys these guys are specifically designed to survive in places like these giant ferns yeah I guess they like this stuff they like growing it here they like I mean they like growing it here oh, I don't know. why is all this dead all that stuff is dead something killed them I think there was a drought here Look at that. <laughs> it's a Gracilophora. That's something else for a change. It's in direct sun too. It's pretty pink. See, no shade whatsoever. Nothing in there. Just protected by some nice clouds. For once it's not a Mindanaoensis. Check it out. It's a seedling. I almost stepped on it. So tiny. See? So small. Mm -hmm. See how much we can. I don't know what you are. Pretty cool. 
this mudslide thing. I guess uh, it started to rain. I didn't prepare for rain, to be honest. <laughs> I know. It's dumb, right? And it's getting muddy. Really muddy. But we're gonna push out. Rain here doesn't last very long. Keeps everybody wet. Look at this. They are everywhere. Oh, those are just nips. See? There's another one. There's some more. 